Welcome everyone to our midnight 6.6 .6 training session. Today we'll be going over the estimating system in midnight. In particular, we'll look at how to create estimates by way of either brand new creation, copying, or creation through the various modules that are not the estimate module. We'll also look at how to convert our estimates into orders. And within our estimates, how to create either multi-quantity estimate and or micromanage the postage that would be included with an estimating process. To start things off, estimates are controlled within the customer service module within Midnight. You enter your estimates list, then it'll be brought to your main screen in which you have a view of all of your estimates. You can adjust the search filters here at the top to change which ones are visible. For instance, only seeing your open estimate or one estimate, which are ones that have been converted to an order, your closed estimate, and others. You can customize the list of options here in the status menu, so that way you can change the statuses of your estimates and give them different search options if you'd like to take advantage of the capability for searching. However, our system does automatically create estimates with the status of open. And if you convert it to an order, it will automatically become the status of one. The other criteria in here we can search and filter by can all be adjusted and manipulated here at the top of the table, in which you can fill out various information pieces regarding your customer, perhaps the CSR, or sales rep, or maybe the job that you filled out. And if you'd like to take your search filter options even deeper, you can click the extended search button here. And you can search either by a range of expected quantities, search by a range of due date or estimate entry date, search by one of up to three different user-defined fields and their respective values, or by customer code rather than customer name. If you'd like to search filters up here, you do need to enter your value and then click submit to submit that. So for the other search filters that we see below, all you need to do is type in your value and you'll see the data returned immediately. Quick and cancel gets rid of any search filter options and reverts everything back to its default search. And if you'd like to rearrange what you see here on the screen, while everything does display by estimate number, you can click the header of whichever column you'd like to work with and change the sort option for the screen as well, resetting them back to default by clicking the reset focus button at the end of the wallet. To access an estimate, you can either click the blue text for the estimate number or project name, or under the recently visited tab on the left, you can access your 10 most recently visited estimates for your profile. Doing so here means that you can log out and log back in on a different machine, for instance, a laptop versus your home computer versus a mobile device. And you'll see the 10 most recently accessed on here will always be listed as the same. Meaning that if you're on the go, you have easy access to your recent data. You can create an estimate in a handful of ways. Primarily, we'll be doing so by clicking the green new estimate button here. You can do this from the home screen instead. Although there is no green button, you can select it from the quick link within this upper right menu, add estimate being the first option you have. And upon selection of either of these, you'll be brought into an estimate screen where you can begin filling out your information. The estimate will start again by giving you the status of open and it assumes that you'll be selecting a customer. You can do this in two ways. You can either A, select it from the drop-down menu here, 
either by either picking it from the list or by typing in a filter option to consolidate your list of choices. Alternatively, you can click the blue customer search button here on the left. This will bring up a screen allowing you to search for customers in a little bit more of a detailed way. Fill out your search filter options, much like we saw on the other screen. Select your choice, and you'll see that customer will be selected from the set. You'll see I have an account warning message that appeared. In this case, if your customer has been given an account warning message, it will appear any time you create an estimate and select that particular customer. That also means that if you change the customer on an estimate that already exists, this account warning message will be prompted as well. So if you're creating template estimates, copying them out and changing them to an appropriate customer, the warning message will display accordingly. After you select the customer, some default information will carry in. Their taxable info, such as whether or not they are taxable and if so, what their tax jurisdiction is, will be brought in from the customer profile, as well as their net terms and conditions, their sales rep and their CSR default, as well as the company profile. The company is your internal licensee account and helps determine both the return address information that prints on documentation like the invoices or estimate that you provide out to your customers. Additionally, the logo that's presented will come from that company profile. And oftentimes you'll find that you may only have one company profile to refer to. In fact, I'd say the majority of our midnight users do. In that case, let's make sure that the customer's default company is the only one that's selected, so that way you're documentation letterhead is correctly being built. The other defaulted information comes for the estimate date, which will always default to the day of entry. And under the different tabs here at the bottom, your postage tab will include a couple of pieces of defaulted information from the customer profile, that being related to their postage information, like a permit number or default geographical location. The other pieces of information we see across the entire estimate, with the exception of a couple of fields that can be chosen, such as the EDF down below, when converted to an order, will carry forward into that. So the dates that we see here at the top, services, quantities, etc., they'll all be brought forward. Now under the general tab, you'll see the core information about your estimate. The details tab is where you list your expected quantity, which is just the general quantity that you would have your client place an order with. You also see the update quantity button, which when utilized acts as a find and replace. Search for any service with a quantity of the expected value and it swaps it with this updated quantity value, recalculating pricing if you choose through the prompt that appears. Other values that will either be carried forward or you know, at least be seen in here by default include the copied from estimate number to show you the source estimate of the one that you're looking at right now. The order number, which if you're creating an estimate by backwards exporting an order, you'll see the order that it was sourced from. And the two leftover containers, leftovers being a selection field and leftovers shipped to being a manual entry field. These tend to refer to what you would need as far as residual handling. So do make sure to fill these out accordingly with the leftovers, preferably being just a simple option of what to do with them, such as hold on for a future order or return to client. And use the leftover ship to to determine and define where everything's being shipped to to get to the customer or where it is stored internally, etc. As we saw in our CRM training, there are user-defined fields, or UDF, that you can create. 
every core module of midnight, including estimate, has access to them. And in fact, we have a few 30 that you can create. These 30 EDFs appear starting from their first active one in the upper left, moving to the second, third, and fourth, beginning the next row, and so on. If you have your first two UDFs deactivated and your first active one is UDF number three, then that will be the first one that appears here in the upper left, followed by four, five, etc. Much like how you see numbers displayed on a telephone. The different tabs that we see to the right of details all the way up until the postage tab are your service type. These are where your different services can be found. Within each one, you can select an appropriate service. And if a quantity is provided, then when you select that service, if the total space price of that item is $1 or less, then the quantity will default to the expected quantity. And if the price of the service is greater than a dollar, then the quantity will be defaulted to one. Now, each individual department or service type has its own respective comments that you can add. These will carry forward into a work order and can be usable for either display on a production report or a work order report, or simply may just be information that needs to be made visible for your sales committee, CFR, or This is a little bit different from the details tab estimate comments, which appear on your estimate or quote that you send out to your customers. After you've created your estimate, filled out your general services, quantities, etc., you may end up moving over to the postage tab. In here, this is where your postage is accounted for. This referring to your stamps, meters, permits, etc. All these drop downs have controls that can either be set to the customer or to the admin level. And will correspond to different types of post information you need, such as where you're sending your goods to, how they're getting there, and some identification behind them. The holder, meter number, and posted required amount are hand entry fields. However, for the postage amount required, you can select several different postage estimate rates here in this drop down. And the sum of each of these combined will add up to give you a calculated posted amount required for your estimate. Do note that the postage list that we have here is updated with the most recent coming from the United States Postal Service. Noting in this case that the values that have an asterisk ahead of them are prior records from before the postage update would have happened, meaning that if you have an estimate that was created before a postage update, those records will appear here at the top. And the new current records will appear here at the bottom. They will be the ones with no asterisk. After you fill all these out, then you'll presumably have a whole estimate ready to go, made up of services and postage estimates. So this way you can prep a, a document that your client may find valuable in order to generate or consider a quote. You can find those in this report tab. Double click the one that's appropriate for your needs, of which you should have five to start with, and see which one of ours comes close to what you're looking for. Alternatively, you may have a custom report that's been built to look a little bit different or more closely related to what you need the documentation to display as. And when you do that, 
then again, the documentation will be easily available. The C line for your individual services and for your postage, all adding together to give you a service and a postage total and a total including your estimate of postage. Now, if your customer intends on requesting a quote from you that accounts for several different quantities, you can account for that by going into the multiple quantities tab and noting that your default expected quantity is what's referenced first. And you can create new ones for different intervals by adding in the numbers and hitting update price when you're ready. You can click the edit button to see what the prices are for each individual item. You may have some that recalculate based on volume discount. Those may be entered in at the admin level and based on the quantities that you enter here. When you hit the update pricing button, these numbers are generated using that global discount if necessary. If you have one of these created that you don't need, you can hit the delete button to get rid of it. If you want to change these inside of their edit list, you can by either replacing the quantity, the unit price, or even checking out and removing that service as a whole. And we have some reports built specifically to show this information, such as our multi-quantity, multi-quantity detail, and multi-page estimate. These will break your interaction out in a little bit of a different way. You'll see in this case, you have a vertical breakdown of your total. And other versions of this report will show this in different ways. So take a look at them and see what can satisfy your needs. Other features within the estimate process before we work on converting this to an order after approval include the attachments tab in which you can select a file type and import a file up to 20 megabytes in size that relates to the estimate at hand, such as a contract or a PDF for proof. Note that when you upload your file, you do need to give it a file name so that Midnight can present it to you in a way that's easy to interpret, such as if you have a contract file with a name that includes date and timestamp and some other information that isn't necessarily relevant, you can just give it a file name of contract here and it will be easily visible to your sales team. Additionally, you can create proofs within the estimating process by entering the proof tab and hitting the green add new proof button. We go over proofs much later in our training series, but do be aware that proofs one, allow you to send a document or a file or group of files to one or several different users as an organization. After they've approved, you'll be able to see the status of their approved. Alternatively, if they reject it, you'll see that as well. And the user that sends out the proof will be receiving emails directly from the client using Midnight's automated alert system to pass that message along to you as well as making it visible on the estimate level and in the proof module. When we're completed with our estimate and our customer has approved everything that's necessary, be it the numbers, the proof, or a combination of the two, then you may be ready to actually create your order out of your estimate. You can do so by doing one of two things. You can either click the green export to order button, which pushes out this quantities, estimate values, services, post records, etc., into the order. Alternatively, if you have multi quantities and you want to push one of those out instead, you can click the export button in line with the quantity that you want created for that new order. In either case, once you click that export button, you'll be given a prompt to let you know the new order that was created. And once you click OK, you'll be brought into that new order.
And as you peruse through the job, you'll see the name, date information, services, et cetera. All of that will be carried forward. The information from the postage tab will carry in as well, such as the amount required and some of the geographical info and permit information. However, the individual postage instances themselves will not carry forward. Those are just estimates. And in here is where you log the actual postage cost or sale rate. And then you could have documentation prepared from the order, such as a postage prepay invoice to send out to your customers for actual payment. If everything's gone well in the order and you'd like to create a new estimate in a future instance based on an order that was delivered with satisfaction to your customer, you can do so by entering the details tab of that order and clicking the estimate export button. This does the same thing as we just did, but backwards, where it creates a new estimate and brings you into it upon creation. And you can repeat the process as needed. We do have a couple of reports that show estimate-based information. If we save our estimate, or save and close out of it, or create another one by hitting copy, any information necessary will be carried into the next estimate, or we can move on to a different area of the system with the estimate info in a different view. In our reports module, which is accessed by clicking the page icon here in the upper right, Specifically under our sales reports, we do have a handful of estimate reports, such as our open estimate, which is pretty much a printable and Excel exportable mimic of the estimate search screen. We have the estimate status report. This lets you see the status of your estimate over a period of time, so that we can tell how many estimates you have outstanding versus converted one. There's also the estimate close ratio report, which not only shows your close for one estimate, but also information about them as in what order has been created from them. In this case, we can see that for my particular sales rep account, six of my nine estimates were converted into orders, so we get a percentage of close and satisfaction for conversion that we can easily view and track the success of estimating. Finally, to control some of the factors that we have for many of those drop-down menus, we can enter our admin menu to access several of them, specifically under our estimates and orders menu. We have our disposition list, which allows us to identify why an estimate may have been canceled or won. We have document types, which pertains to the attachments that we saw a few moments ago. We have the estimate status which refers to the one and open that were described at the beginning of this training, as well as any others you'd like to add, close, on hold, lost. Perhaps you might want one status that is awaiting approval, et cetera. For these screens, and for pretty much all the others in the admin menu, you can create new options by filling in a new choice here at the bottom. And once you have created this, you can click the Save This button to input it. Alternatively, you can edit them by changing the name, et cetera, and unchecking the active checkbox in most cases to remove that choice. Many choices of admin feature controls in Midnight cannot be disabled by method of deletion. The reason for that is because deleting a value that may be tied to one or more different estimate orders or whatever you may be looking for data at means that you may have missing values or you may be deleting data, which could be irreplaceable. So instead, we simply allow you to turn it off. That way you don't see it for anything going forward, but your old estimates or old data that would have used that particular value will maintain it for historical 
integrity. Back to values themselves, the leftover instructions is where we put that leftover chip two and then leftover is drop down control. The taxes and terms that we assign on the customer level by default or we select on the job begin with the tax code. And we can fill out our different codes that our state, county, city may have. We'll then create a jurisdiction that is made up of those codes. In the terms, that carries in as well through here. Again, the taxes and terms can be defaulted on the customer level, so it may very well be that you don't ever worry about adding these to your estimates and orders because everything's defaulted. Some postage information comes from this postage sublist, in which we have the mail category, class, and geography. Again, populating those various drop down menus that we saw under the postage tab. We'll also see the postage estimate rates list. This list gives us a view of all of our active and, if necessary, inactive postage estimate rates. As a reminder, we do keep these updated following the USPS update. There was just one posted out last month, and our system is current to that. You can adjust these or create new ones as needed by either modifying them with the edit button, just like you saw on the screen earlier with the estimate statuses, or create a whole new choice, perhaps a combo here at the bottom. Final area before our main options includes the user defined fields. In here, you can select estimate, and with this list, you can come up with up to 30 of your user defined fields. If you utilize one, click the edit button to activate it, give it a label name, a field type, such as what kind of text will allow it to display. Additionally, if you want to add a field size, so that way, if there is a character limit, this would define what that limit is. Finally, something that's a bit unique to the estimate and order UDF, you have the ability to copy an estimate, and if you'd like, you can have the estimate value for the UDF copy forward. Additionally, if you were to build an estimate, UDF and you want that value to convert into the UDF for the order that's created by exporting it, then you can hit this export checkbox as well. This automatically creates a matching UDF into the order UDF list. So that way data can easily be marked to transfer from one to the other. One area that touches on a few features, but not necessarily choices, of text entry that we see in the estimate screen comes from this window in the global settings. For starters, we do have our company, which is one of those default options, and this is where that licensee or return address information is defined, as well as the report logo. We can also pick and choose whether or not we can have the total services and tax or CPM or cost of thousand displayed on the estimate. If these boxes are unchecked, then the prices could then only be viewed from a board. Additionally, we do have our estimates and orders tab. And in here, there's a couple of features as far as estimates go. Specifically, if you have different methods of pricing, like contract or customer specific pricing, which are covered in our pricing session, it just determines how services appear in those orders or estimates. covers everything for today's estimates training in midnight. 
if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us at support at printreach.com. Alternatively, if you'd like to reach out and give us a call, you can do so by dialing 425-828-9495-622. Thank you for attending and have a wonderful day.